Hello everyone, this is Pookie Codes, and in this video, we're going to look at part 4 of Neural Networks Explained, where we will solve the XOR problem, and we will also look at how neural networks with multiple layers work. So let's get started. So, as a recap, we have seen that neural networks of the form y1 is equal to step of w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 and so on plus b1 can be visualized as a line that separates the two classes, so 0 and 1, by finding where the input that you pass to step, which is w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus then on plus b1, when that is equal to 0. So, we have also seen that the XOR problem cannot be solved by just separating with a line. So, now we will look at how a multi-layer neural network can solve this problem. So, if you recall, the XOR gate is basically that it is true when only, if and only one of the inputs is true, not two, but only one. So here is the truth table, so as you can see, for 0 and 0, you get 0, 0, 1, there's only 1, 1, that's good, so it gives 1, 1, 0, there's only 1, 1, that's good, so 1, and 1, 1, this gives 0 because there's 2, 1, and not 1, 1. And now, this is the OR gate, and I want you to notice how much it's similar to the XOR gate, except for the last input. So, we have 0, 0, 0. Then 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, and 1. And basically the OR gate is that it is true when at least one of the input is true. So it can be 1 that is true or 2 that is true. And the NAND gate is basically not AND, which, it, which means that the gate returns false if and only when both of the inputs are true. So as you can see, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. And then when it's 1, 1, because both of the inputs are true, this is a NAND gate, so it's going to give us 0. And now, as you can see, both of these gates, OR and NAND, are very similar to the XOR. It's just that they are missing one blue, the blue that is not here in the XOR. So if we could somehow use the two of them together and only take the thing they have in common, which is the highlighted in red, we would be able to get an XOR gate. So, let's see. I'm just going to plot the truth tables for X1, X2, X1 NAND X2, X1 OR X2, and X1 XOR X2. So now we can maybe see some sort of pattern, some sort of something that we could leverage. So 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Then x1, then that. 0, 0 gives 1, 1, 0 gives 1, 0, 1 gives 1. And then when it's 1, 1, since both of the inputs are true, it's a 0. Then again, you have x1 or x2. And so as you can see, it's only the first one, 0, 0, that's going to be 0. And the rest is going to be 1. And then for the XOR, you'll see that's going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. So basically it's false when both of the inputs are the same. So, I don't know if you notice, but notice how when you get 1, 0, it gives us 0. And when you get 0, 1, you get also a 0. But when you have 1 and 1, you get a 1. So if we could use X1 and X2 as well as X1 or x2 as an input to a gate, what would that gate be? If you want the gate to output true when x1 and x2 and x1 or x2 is true and false when it's not. So what we want is an output that is true only when both of its inputs are true. And so this is an AND gate. Therefore, x1, x or x2 can be expressed as x1 and x2 and x1 or x2. So as you can see here, 
we do 1 and 0. This gives us 0. Here we do 1 and 1. This gives us 1. Here we do 1 and 1. This gives us 1. We do 0, 1. This gives us 0. And this is actually an end operation. So, we have now found how we can express XOR as a combination of gates. So now I'm just going to do a quick refresher for the formulas and you'll see how it's useful later on. So we know that for the AND gate, the formula is of y1 is equal to step of x1 plus x2 minus 1.5. So let's test it. For example, if I wanted 1, I want it to be true. So let's see. Step of 1 plus 1 minus 1.5, this gives me 0 0.5. So step of 0 0.5, since it's bigger than 0, is going to be 1. When I have, for example, 0 and 1, I have 0 plus 1 minus 1.5, this gives me minus 0 0.5. And I have step of minus 0 0.5, which gives me something 0. So because it's smaller than 0, this gives me 0. For the OR gate, it's actually y1 is equal to step of x1 plus x2 minus 0 0.5. So we can test it again. So if both of the inputs are 0, we have step of 0 plus 0 minus 0 0.5. So, for example, when we have 1 and 0, we have y1 is equal to step of 1 plus 0 minus 0 0.5, which gives us 0 0.5. And for the NAND gate, we see that y1 is equal to step of minus parenthesis x1 plus x2 minus 0 0.5. And the minus is here because you want to flip the labels of the AND gate. Because the NAND gate is the opposite of the AND gate. So then Y1 is equal to, if you develop, step of minus X1 minus X2 plus 0 0.5. So if that wasn't clear to you, you can refer to part 3 of Neural Networks Explained, where I show how I derive those formulas. So now, Let's draw the neural network. I'm going to draw them in a pretty straightforward way. And it's also going to be the one that you see in the internet. So I'm going to say that here I have something called inputs. Those are inputs. And then the links here, those are called weights. And I also have that for the outputs, this gives, this is named y1. So, we also have the biases, the weights, and the inputs as it's written. So, for the end gate, we see that it's the weight of 1, weight of 1, and a bias of minus 1.5, as we can see right here. We also know that for the OR gate, it's actually 1, 1, and minus 0 0.5. So, if you don't believe me, you can always test it. So, 1... 1, 0, this gives me 1 times 1, plus 0 times 1, this gives me 1, 1 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.5, step that, and that becomes 1. And then, for the NAND gate, it's minus 1, minus 1, plus 1 1.5, as we have seen before. So, those are the weights. Okay, so, so those are the weights. Those are the biases. And as always, we can test it again. So I want it to be false only when both of the inputs are true. So 1 and 1. This gives me minus 1 plus minus 1 minus 2 plus 1.5 minus 0 0.5. Since it's smaller than 0, this gives me 0 as the step function. So when I have 1 and 0, for example, I have... 1, 0, this gives me minus 1, plus 1.5, which gives me 0 0.5, and since 0 0.5 is bigger than 0, we get that step of 0 0.5 is actually just 1. So this works. So we know that the XOR gate is x1 NAND x2 and x1 OR x2. So I'm going to just take the two neural networks add them together, and then do an AND operation with their outputs. And so this looks like this. So here, as you can see, this is the NAND gate. 
So minus 1, minus 1, plus 1, more 5. And here, I have the OR gate. So 1, 1, minus 0 0.5. And then, those are the outputs. So this is the output from the OR gate. This is the output from the NAND gate. And after I do that, is that I take their inputs, them, I treat them as new inputs to my AND gate. And this finally gives me the output of XOR, which is finally what we want. So if I express this in a more compact form, since X1 here and X1 here is duplicated, this gives me a neural network that looks like this. So X1, X2, and then this is the output from the NAND gate, and this is the output from the OR gate. So as you can see, the weights are those of the NAND gates, minus 1, minus 1, and the bias is plus 1.5. And as you can see here, this is really the, the OR gate, so 1, 1, minus 0 0.5. If we want to test it, we could do, for example, 1 and 1, and then for NAND, we will see that we have 1 times minus 1, plus 1 times minus 1, minus 2, and then you add the bias, plus 1.5, which gives me minus 0 0.5. And since it's smaller than 0, I then get a 0 as input to the next function, to the next layer here. And then for the OR gate, I see that 1, 1, it's 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 0 0.5. This gives me 1.5, and since this is bigger than 0, I also get a 1 here. And finally, what I do is that there is the AND gate. And so the AND gate tells me to do, well, what I need to do. So 0 times 1 plus 1 times 1 minus 1 1.5. So this gives me 1 minus 1 1.5, which is minus 0 0.5. And since this is smaller than 0, I get as output 0. And so this is the correct output for an XOR gate. So when you have 1, 1, since the inputs are the same, and there is more than 1, 1, I then get as output 0. So as a conclusion, neural networks with multiple layers allows us to solve problems that are not linearly, that are not linearly separable. Therefore, neural networks that have more layers can be thought as each layer in the middle having a role of simplifying the input such that at the end, the, 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 the input that the last layer receives is so simple that it can just use a line and separate them and output the correct answer. So if you like this content, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And in the next video, we're going to look at how that propagation works or how neural networks learn as well as matrix notation. So see you next time.